Hello and welcome. Today we're going to discuss examinational slides for pathological anatomy exam. Uh, I want to pay your attention that uh, slides are really important for your mark and that's why we're going to discuss all 20 slides today. Uh, before we start, a uh, little bit information about the microscopes on, on exam. On exam you will have the microscope without the mirror but with the lamp. Also in the uh, microscope you may see special uh, things for movement of the table for the left and right and up and down. Uh, please use uh, these things but not the fingers because it may destroy a microscope. Uh, it's better to divide all 20 slides by the organs and by the pathological processes. The most of uh, slides are combined by the organs, for example, like kidney, lungs, and some others, but some of them could be the single, uh, like only the pathological process. For example, we will, we're going to start from the hemorrhagic stroke. The hemorrhagic stroke is a brain tissue with hemorrhage inside and how we may find it. So, first of all, you put the uh, slide in the microscope and may see the picture like that. So, you can't see currently what happened inside. So, you have to use the micro wind to find the focus and then you find it, you may move the slide. So, first of all, uh, you should uh, exam, exam and uh, pay attention for the borders of the anything which you may see on the slide. Now I may see hemi, uh, homogeneous pink masses with uh, small nuclei inside, and I can't see any specific changes. Probably uh, on that area we may see some strange things. Uh, you, you may see that area have a bit more red color than all, all other tissues, but we may note it, but uh, we will not do a conclusion right now. We're going to examine all slide. You, and also we may see the second and third area with same changes. And now we may see more of these areas in that area of the uh, vision. So uh, now we may see the huge areas of red masses. And this red masses has a homogeneous structure. Uh, we may choose uh, another objective of the microscope and see closer what happened in this area. In that area we may see uh, some particles with red and brown color. Uh, this brown color mostly associated with uh, oxygenation of the blood uh, in the processes of histo histological examination. Uh, the mostly, most important uh, things which we should note is the red color of the areas and red small things, uh, small points, which we may see on the slide. On this objective, we may see small red dots inside of these red areas. And these red areas are uh, infiltrated by erythrocytes, red blood cells. Red blood cells in the tissue means hemorrhage. And uh, also we should find the organ. The organ which has uh, homogeneous uh, structure uh, with uh, a lot of cells mostly should be the brain. So by these features, we may make a conclusion that on that slide we may see hemorrhagic stroke. Also, we may see a lot of red areas on that slide and a lot of places with hemorrhages here. Uh, I prepare a lot of different slides uh, with the same diagnosis. That's why now I want to change that slide to another slide with the same pathological process. Because usually you tell me that the uh, different slides look different. Honestly, we may see the same picture on that slide. 
Again, we begins where uh, we begin the examination with a description of the homogeneous uh, pink tissue with a lot of nuclei inside, and we wanna examine all areas as much as it possible. And on that slide, we may see these red areas inside of the brain tissue. So it's again hemorrhagic stroke. One more area here. Also, we may note the vessels with hyperemia, like that one and with smallest one. So on that slide, the hemorrhagic area localized only on that areas of view. And the third case with the same diagnosis. We may see area of hemorrhages from the beginning. And one more here. And semi-transparent pink masses here with a lot of nuclei and huge area of hemorrhages inside of it on that area, for example. The diagnosis is the same, so it's hemorrhagic stroke. I hope you note some similar things which we may see on all these three slides. It's a semi-transparent homogeneous pink masses with a lot of nuclei and areas with red coloring. So it's a places of hemorrhages. So not only the diagnosis is necessary to tell to the examiner, also you may describe the picture which you may see here and uh, you may suggest the reasons for formation of that pathological processes. That's why we, uh, we may ask you about some other things uh, or about that slide. So uh, probably we finish with that slide. Let's change our case to another one. So uh, firstly, we should find any things which we may see on the slide. Here we may see uh, eosinophilic or pink masses with inflammatory lymphocytic infiltration inside. Now we may only describe the picture which we may see. We may see a lot of collagenous fibrils here, these pink masses, these pink lines. And also we may see that between these pink masses, we may see uh, vessels with thick uh, wall and uh, huge lymphocytic infiltration. Now we should close examine that morphological formation uh, we may see more elastic fibrils here and areas with inflammatory infiltration Honestly, we have to find some uh, cells of uh, endothelium of vessels because that slide is mesartitis, syphilitic mesartitis. Syphilitic mesartitis, it is an inflammatory reaction in case of syphilis uh, in vasophosorum vessels of, uh, of iota. And uh, uh, we may made a conclusion about the syphilitic nature of the process. But on that slide, we may see only the wall of elastic vessel 
with huge inflammatory infiltration. And uh, like an exception of all other 20 slides, we may, may do a conclusion that we may see syphilitic mesartitis. Try to change that slide to an R1. Probably on the next one we can see some cells of endothelium. Again, we may see only the connective tissue fibrils and small lymphocytic infiltration here. Probably endothelial cells could be seen here. No, we don't. The inflammatory reaction here is more pronounced on that areas and uh, the combination of elastic fibrils and uh, uh, inflammatory areas led us to make a conclusion about syphilitic mesartitis. Honestly, you can't tell that here we may see iota and even vessel because we can't see endothelial cells here. We should localize in that area, marked by plus here. Probably that cells could be described like as uh, endothelial cells, but not clearly. And the last one. The picture which we seen is the same in all that slide, so we may see only the some connective tissue, the vessels and inflammatory infiltration. That's why we may make a conclusion that in all these slides we may see syphilitic mesartitis. Honestly, you may do that conclusion only cause uh, you may see the picture like that on exam only which are associated with syphilis and in iota. The uh, additional question about that slide could be associated with uh, um, the syphilis periods, the etiology of syphilis, the stages of it, and uh, some other um, questions about the syphilis. Please be ready. Uh, so, Probably you note the same things which we may see in all these three slides. Uh, we are connective tissue, uh, fibrils, and uh, infiltration by lymphocytes inside of the connective tissue, and a lot of vessels, uh, sometimes with the blood inside of that connective tissue. Uh, sometimes you may see endothelial cells and uh, if you see it, it's uh, one more uh, feature of iteria here. So one more feature of iota, probably. The next slide. <clears throat> uh, again, we begin the examination from the border of the morphological formation, and here we may see some kind of muscle tissue. The muscle tissue looks like uh, single fibrils uh, on the slide. Also, we may note that some something happens with that connected uh, with these muscle fibrils because uh, their structure is a bit changed. They are a bit more pink and uh, has more um, hyperchromic reaction here. Also, we pay attention for vessels inside of the muscular tissue and they are full of the blood. Uh, it's one of the marker of myocardial infarctions. But for Cullen diagnosis and for
for detection of that pathological process, we should change the objective to the 10 and examine the cells closely. So here we may see homogeneous muscular fibrils without nuclei inside. Yeah, we may see some small cells between the muscles, but mostly we are uh, lymphocyte. For example, on that area, we can't see even one blue dot in the all uh, view field. And uh, this is uh, a marker of a necrotical process here. So the necrosis is uh, one of the most important feature of necrosis is absence of nucleus in the cell. We may examine all of them, and in all of them we can't see even nuclei. Uh, I try to find a healthy muscular tissue on that slide, for example, wet one. I know also. On that slide we may see the huge area of necrosis, for example, that area. Uh, in that area we may see some healthy tissues, uh, I mean healthy muscular fibrils and nuclei or in that muscular fibrils localized in the cells, like in that area, and sometimes on the edge of the cells, like it mostly do, in that area, for example. On that slide, in this area, we may see the healthy muscular tissue, and in that area is a myocardium infarction. Let's change the slide to another one. Again, we may see muscular tissue. The huge edema, the lymphocytic infiltration between the muscular cells. We may note the vessels with blood in that area, here and here. One more area with huge lymphocytic infiltration and huge edema. We should examine as small as more fields of view as we can, and in that area, for example, we may see uh, muscular fibrils without the nucleus again. So there is no any nuclei in all these fibrils of the heart, and also you may see that connective oh, sorry muscular fibrils are fractive. And uh, it's one of mm, one of the feature of myocardium infarction. Fractures of fractures of muscle fibrils, like here. And also we may see lymphalic acidic infiltration in that area. Uh, that infiltration could be associated with formation of demarcational zone of inflammatory process here. And please pay your attention to edema of the tissues. We may see that space between the cells is too huge. It's associated with accumulation of fluids between these cells. It's again one feature of necrosis. And the last one. Again, we may see muscular uh, tissue with edematous reaction and fractured muscles here. In these uh, vessels, we may see lagocytes and erythrocytes. It's one more feature of myocardial infarction.
So, and when we look closer, we may see that muscular fibrils without nucleus. Let's find it. So, in that area, for example, there is no any survive or healthy uh, muscle cell. So, the same features of a myocardial infarction are muscular cells inside of the slide, uh, the edematous reaction, and one of the most important thing is absence of nuclease inside of cardiomyocytes. Also, uh, like an additional features of myocardial infarction, we may note edema and uh, the demarcational inflammatory reaction. Let's change the slide. So on that slide we may see only pink masses Here it looks better. Here we may see some piece of muscular tissue, some piece of fatty tissue, connective tissue fibrils. This is fatty tissue, connective tissue fibrils, and muscular fibrils. some kind of vessel here let's watch more areas of view here In, on that area, we may see a lot of small vessels here, here, and here also. And between these vessels, we may see fibroblasts, lymphatic infiltration. A lot of cells here, a lot of vessels here, and the small vessels are full of blood. It's typical for granulation tissue. But honestly, it is not the best slide for demonstration. Let's try to change it. Oh, probably the area which I suggest to muscular tissue is the areas with vessels. Yes, it is. So uh, there was not the muscular tissue, but the small vessels which are full of the blood. So we may see a lot of vascular cavities inside of that area here, here, and here. Uh, and uh, so, and inflammatory cells nearby it, here and here. It really looks like muscular tissue, but it's not a muscular tissue. So I was confused, and uh, that's why you have to examine the areas in small and closer objectives. Uh, the small objective has red red ring and the medium objective has yellow ring. Now I watch the slide in yellow ring and I may see that that part which I uh, mentioned that were uh, muscular tissue is a granulation tissue and it really looks typical.
the next slide. So all slides with connective t or with granulation tissue in that compilations made from one patient and looks the same. But it doesn't matter that all granulation tissue looks like that. So the granulation tissue is here. So uh, the uh, similar things which we may see in granulation tissue are that small cells which are full of the blood, that inflammatory cells and fibroblast nearby all of the vessels. So the, there is a three components of granulation tissue which you have to describe and uh, have to name. I remind you that granulation tissue is a young connective tissue. That's why we may see these young connective tissue fibrils between the small vessels. And we are also the one of the features of granulation tissue. The additional questions about that slide could be about compensatory adaptational reactions, uh, could be about wood healing process, and so on. Please be ready. The next uh, part of the cell of a slide will be about the liver. So, the firstly, we may see the slide like that. The first thing which we should do in any case of the slide examination, we should suggest the organ. So we may uh, examine as small fields of view as we can, and we may see that cells formed bulk, bulks, and also we may see some uh, vessels in the center of the some morphological uh, formations, and. Also, we may see the bile ducts and liver triate. The liver triate, the central vein, the bulk uh, formation, are the markers of the liver tissue. When we see closer, we may see that inside of hepatocytes, we may see empty spaces or vacuoles. These empty spaces associated with accumulation of lipids and in process of histological staining the lipids go away and only empty spaces left on the place of fatty tissue. That's why we may make a conclusion that here we may see the fatty degeneration of the liver with empty dots. Let's try to see another slide. Bulk looks better here. We also may see the central vein here better. And liver treat also we may see better. For example, here. On that slide, it's better to show you the liver triate. The huge lumen, the, this huge formation, is the, the lobe vein. Uh, also, the small uh, ring in that area, I try to mark it by cross, is the artery. And this uh, ring with huge uh, basophilic reaction, I mean, we may see a lot of blue color inside of the this ring, is a bile duct. So we may see the liver trait usually where it looks like that one. And central wing looks like just a 
ring inside of the liver lobe. Let's examine closer that liver to find 30 dots inside of the hepatocyte. So we may see small areas of lipid accumulation here, these empty spaces here and here, nearby the central vein. Central vein looks like that. So on this slide we may see better the parts of the liver, I mean histological picture of the liver, but not a uh, huge reaction of fatty degeneration of the liver. But we may note some empty spaces inside of hepatocytes. So by these features we may make the conclusion about a fatty degeneration of the liver here. About that, also oh, on that area, we may see more small bubbles inside of hepatocytes. I hope you see these empty white spaces inside of hepatocytes in that area, and we may do a conclusion, make a conclusion that here we may see fatty degeneration of the liver. Let's change our slide to the last one. And it looks the same, and we may see this small pulverized uh, droplets of the fatty fats inside of hepatocytes. So the similar part of the fat degeneration of the liver are the bulk composition of the liver tissue the mm, liver triate, the central vein, and some empty spaces inside of hepatocytes. All of these features let us to make a conclusion about the fat degeneration. The next slide is about the liver again. And here we may see that color of this slide is different. Uh, I may see that uh, color is changed. Uh, in normal uh, condition it should be green, but here we may see orange. <laughs> it's cause uh, the staining uh, be uh, oxygenated and uh, change the color to the um, orange one. But usually it's sh it should be green one. And the that areas should be the uh, should has uh, the red color. So here we may see the belks, but inside of that belks we may can't see the central vein. This feature calls like fake lobe, and also we may see a uh, huge connective tissue fibrils between the fake lobes. And all these features let us to make a conclusion about portal cirrhosis. The additional questions will be about the cirrhosis in general and some kind of liver, liver troubles. The staining which used here is one gizon reaction. One gizon reaction is a special staining to connective tissue and the connective tissue should be red one. But on that slide we can't see the typical reaction. But we may see these connective tissue fibrils between the fake lobes of the liver. Let's try to change the slide to another one. Probably the staining will be better. Not it doesn't, but some grish. Uh, reaction we may see here, but it's nearby the brownish reaction. And connective tissue is more pronounced here. We may see the fake lobe here and connective tissue between the fake lobes again. Also, we may see some fatty changed inside, inside uh, fatty duration in the uh, hepatocytes. It's typical for uh, cirrhosis uh, that 
because it leads to some hypoxic reaction inside of the lobe and we may see some areas with fat degeneration of the liver inside of fake lobes but please pay attention to connective tissue and if you see connective tissue on the slide the and from the formation of the fake lobes of the liver uh, tell to examinator that you may see the liver cirrhosis and try the last one the last slide is orange again, but connective tissue here is red, is its typical reaction. So here we may see non-specific coloring of the liver uh, tissue, but specific coloring of the connective tissue. So connective tissue in case of one gizon reaction should look like that. We may see red areas of connective tissue inside of the tissue of liver. The, in, one of the most important markers of liver cirrhosis is a connective tissue fields between the fake lobes. In all examinational slides, the fake lobes uh, good pronounced on the slides. I hope it will be not too hard for you to detect the pathological process. The similar features are fake lobes and connective tissue. The next slide is a single We may see here only lymphocytes and some kind of a black pigment inside of it. We I try to examine a lot of different fields of view, and you may see that there are a lot of black dots on the surface of that slide. Let's try to see closer, and when we go to see closer, we may see that between lymphocytes there are a lot of areas of black pigment accumulation. And so we made the conclusion that organ is a spleen, and the black pigment inside of a spleen is a hemomelanin. Hemomelanin is a pigment which synthesized in case of malaria. So, and in the finally we made a conclusion that we, uh, the slide is a spleen in malaria. Let's try to change the slide. The parts of tissue are the same. Here we may see a lot of lymphocyte and huge areas of pigment accumulation here. Let's try to see closer. It is not the best slide for demonstration because the thick of uh, thickening of the slide is too huge, and uh, that's why we can't see even the lymphocytes, the red and white pulp of the spleen here, but we may note some black pigment in the lymphoid tissue, and it again led us to make a conclusion about the uh, spleen in memory.
Again, so here we may see some follicles of the spleen. That one. And nearby it we may see the black dots of the mm, mm, hemomelanin. So it again led us to make the conclusion about the malaria and spleen in malaria. The questions will be about the pigment uh, and some chromoprotein disorders. Please be ready to answer uh, for that question. The next group of slides is about gastrointestinal tract. And here we may see some wall of an organ with glands and uh, lymphoid follicles. And we have to note that in the wall of that organ we may see disseminated lympho lake acidic infiltration. The lake lymphocytic infiltration is typical for purulent inflammation, and one of one kind of purulent inflammation is a phlegmone. So, on that slide, we may see phlegma nose appendicide. So, the typical manifestation of appendicide is the glands and lympho uh, lymphotic lymphoid follicles in, under the glandular part and uh, disseminated lake lymphocytic infiltration of the uh, mucosal layer, like here in that area. And these features led us to make a conclusion about phlegmonose appendicitis. Honestly, the phlegmonose appendicitis is one of the most easy, the easiest slide on an exam. So I try to show you uh, only one slide on exam looks like ring with uh, pink and uh, blue color. So if you see something ring-like, it's mostly appendicide. But please check yourself by the light microscope. Let's try to watch one more and go ahead because that slide is too easy to detect. Again, we may see the wall of organ with diffuse lymphocytic infiltration. There is no any glands here because we died in road in the inflammatory process. I hope you can see it. And again, it's a different slide, but it looks like that one. Only wet slide you may detect without microscope, but please check yourself with microscope. Uh, here we may see the part of the stomach. We may see the stomachal glands, stomach glands here. And uh, uh, when you try to uh, describe some parts of GAT, firstly you should find the uh, mucosal layer. And when you find it, you should go ahead the mucosal layer to try to detect some kind of troubles. So, for example, in that area we may see that mucosal layer is interrupted and after it we may see some like a lymphocytic infiltration, so it's an inflammatory reaction here, and uh, in the wall of the stomach we may see connective tissue fibrils, a lot of vessels, and uh, we may go down and see that all walls of layers of the wall of the stomach are involved in the process. Here we may see the area of inflammatory reaction, the vessels which with blood and uh, thrombus 
and it again let us suggest the pathological process. And uh, when we go ahead by this area of inflammation and goes to the uh, normal mucosal layer with inflammation, with hemorrhages, with inflammation again, and uh, a lot of vessels and inflammation reaction. So, uh, the situ in that situation, we may see two borders of stomach ulcer. So, he that one and that one is a border of a stomach ulcer. Uh, and this is a bottom of the stomach ulcer. And in the bottom of stomach ulcer, we may see the connective tissue. And all these features led us to make the conclusion about the chronic stomach ulcer because we may see connective tissue here on the slide. The questions will be about etiology, risk factors, uh, the morphology of the stomach ulcer, and definition of stomach ulcer disease. Uh, please be ready to answer. The similar histological picture we may see on that slide because we made by one patient from one patient. But probably connective tissue fibrils are more pronounced here. It's better to try to see it here. And uh, the, these pink masses and that one, that one is a muscles of the stomach. So you may see that connective tissue surround that connective, uh, the, this muscular tissue in the stomach in case of chronic stomach ulcer. Let's go ahead to next slide. So uh, here we may see one part of gastrointestinal tract and again we may see that we have to find the mucosal layer. The mucosal layer is here and uh, we may suggest that it is small intestina by the morphological view of the of the mucosal layer. Also, we may see some areas with necrosis and inflammation here. And all these features led us to make the conclusion about small intestina due to cholera. Pay your attention for these holes in the mucosal layer. This is a markers of the inflammatory and uh, degenerative, degenerative processes in, in the small intestine. The another slide, and it looks the same, we may see these hollows in the uh, mucosal layer, we may see the inflammatory reaction here, the necrosis also in the mucosal layer of the small intestine. Also pay your attention to edematose transformation of the ball of the small intestine, which it is also important for correct diagnosis. So that was that were your all slides about the gastrointestinal tract. The next slides are about the <clears throat> lungs. So the lungs looks like a lot of empty spaces with thick walls and sometimes we may see something special inside of them. So for example here we may see 
the inflammatory infiltrate inside of the alveoli. We're gonna change the objective to closer one and we may see Leica sites here. And some can uh, fibrinose fibrils inside of the alveoli in the exudate. So when we may see uh, a lot of different parts inside of the exudate and when we may see that area of the inflammatory erection is too huge, we may suggest the pneumonia. Mostly it's a cruppose pneumonia because we may see the fibrils of fibrin inside of the alveoli. Let's try to change the slide. Oh, that slide is better. Show us the histological picture of Krupos pneumonia. When we change the objective and looks inside of the alveoli, we may see the homogeneous masses, uh, pink masses inside of alveoli. So, for example, now I want to try to show you the border of the alveoli by the cross. I hope you see it here. And uh, nearby the wall, we may see a space of alveoli. So in the alveoli, we may see some fibrils of fibrin, and it is a marker of Krupos inflammation. Also, we may see the cells of inflammatory uh, uh, of inflammation. Also, we may see that walls of uh, alveoli is increased, and it is a marker of inflammatory process inside of them. That slide is better to show us the histological picture of Coropos pneumonia. The question about that slide could be about the pneumonia in general, the etiology, the risk factors, the stages and so on, the complications. Please be ready for answer. Let's watch it on the small objective. Yeah, in a lot of lungs we may see uh, different pigments. If pigment has black color, mostly it is a, co a coal. Coal from the error which brewing in the cities. That's why it's not a brown duration of the lung. It's usual pigment of the citizen. I hope now you understand the histological picture of the corpus pneumonia. We may see the pulmonary tissue again, but uh, we can't see a cruppos inflammation here because the alveoli is empty. But we may see the focus of pink tissues, the pink nodes inside of that lung, and sometimes we may note some huge particles in these nodes. These huge particles should be the pyrogophilin Hans cell. Let's find it out. It is not the best example of the pyrogophilin Hans cell, but it is the pyrogophilin Hans cell. So we may see that cells, cell is huge 
and when nuclear on it localized like an arc. Please watch to it. Closer. Okay, let's try to change the slide. Probably on other slides we may see Pirog of one hand cells which looks typically. So for example here we may see that areas is again the pirog of one hand cells but not the typical. Again, we may see the call. Mm -hmm. On that area, we may see the typical example of the paragraph one half cell here. Okay, let's try to change the slide to the last one. Again, here we may see the palmary tissue with atelectatic areas. And here we may see the typicalist Pirogov on Hansel. It should like that. Not all of them are so huge, but in typically we may see the huge cells with arc localization of the nucleus in small area of tuberculum node. I hope now you may detect the Pirogov von Hans cell in the slide and it will be a huge help to you on exam to make a correct diagnosis. One more Pirogov von Hans cell here. So, and diagnosis is Miller TB here. Uh, we may see the, a lot of small nodes in the lung with Pirogov von Hans cell. It's a markers of tuberculosis process. The questions will be about the mm, definition of TB, the stages and forms of it. Please be ready. The next slide is uh, again about the uh, lungs and uh, now we may see in the lung uh, a lot of brown pigment and it is a brown in duration of the lungs. The additional question about that slide will be about the elective stains for hemocedrin because hemocedrin we may see in the areas of lungs, so please pay attention to difference of hemocedrine, which localized here, and the coal, which we may see on that area. Here we may see the coal, here we may see the uh, hemocedrine. Let's watch one more slide. And here it's better to see the brown areas between the alveoli.
and the call again. So this is a call. This is a TMS ring. The color is different. The call got black color, the TMS ring brown. The pulse reaction detected, will detect it. The next slides are about the kidneys. So first of all, uh, how the easiest way to detect kidneys is find the glomeruli. So that formation, that formation and red one is a glomeruli. Glomeruli is easy to find in the slide because we are huge and uh, only by the glomerulus we may suggest that we can see kidney on the slide. Now we may examine all areas of view of the slide and uh, can't see any specific um, on the red uh, objective. When we change the objective to the yellow one we may see the epithelial cells of the tubes the tubes this small formation and inside of the tubes there is no any nuclei that's why we may suggest a diagnosis it's better to see it here now uh, the diagnosis will be necrotic nephrosis or acute renal failure you may see here the empty cells of epithelium of convoluted tubes. It is the easiest slide probably on the exam. One more slide, again we may see glomerulae. Here and here and here, we may see a lot of glomerulus here on the slide. And pay attention to the convoluted tubes here and here. We may see that there, there is no any nucleus inside of them. We are dyed. And again, the diagnosis is necrotic nephrosis. And again, there is no any nucleus inside of the uh, epithelium of convolved tubes. This is a tube and this is glomeruli. Please re remember it on the exam because well, sometimes we ask you and you choose some different structures. The next slide again about the kidney. So we may see glomeruli here, we could look different. This is glomeruli and also this is glomeruli, but we may see some homogeneous red masses here and here and also some red masses inside of glomeruli here and here and here. So on this uh, slide we may see homogeneous semi-transparent red masses in the stroma, uh, glomeruli, tubes and uh, the wall, vessels of wall, for example, like here, and uh, all these markers led us to make a conclusion about amyloidosis of the kidney. Uh, and on that slide, we may see the congerod, uh, congerod uh, elective staining. It is an elective staining for amyloid, and amyloid becomes red here. I hope you can see it on the slide that all places with red color is a place of amyloid accumulation. 
But not all slides on the exam are colored by the Congo red. Some of them got hematoxylin as the interaction. And uh, in that slide, the uh, amyloid will have just pink homogeneous masses in the glomerulus. On that slide, it's again Congo red reaction. Let me see it here and here. So the picture is the same, but probably amyloid is more pronounced here in that uh, kidney, and it's better to see it. And the last slide about the kidneys. We try to examine it as more as more fields of view as we can. And uh, something wrong with the glomeruli we may note. For example, here in that area, we may see that capillaries of glomeruli are constricted, and uh, under the capsula of Shumlansky, we may see the semi loon formation here and in the capillary, in the glomeruli nearby it, and in some other glomerulus also. So, and only by these semi loons formation, we may make the conclusion that uh, this is a subacute glomerular nephritis. Please pay your attention to that glomeruli. This is not the semi loon formation, it's just a hollow lumen of the capsula shumlansky bowman But the typical semi loon formation I showed you in the previous glomeruli, and I want to try to find it. For example, here you may see the proliferation of the cells of the capsula. Here, uh, sorry, try to find it again. All these glomerulus are with the semi loon formation, but that one which my, marked by the cross, is a typical one. So if they ask you to draw the uh, uh, glomeruli with the semi -loon, try to draw that one. You may see that this is a semi -loon formation, red one. Not empty hollow, but a proliferation of cells of capsule. Here we may see the same picture in that glomeruli and in that also. That this glomeruli is closer to normal. Red one is with semilun formation. Normal, semilun, normal, semilun, 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 and that one is with semilun formation. And all these are also with semilun formations. Here we may see the normal glomeruli. Uh, it's difficult to say that we are normal because this increase of lumen of capsula is not uh, and noma, but they are without the semi -loons. There is no any semi here on the slide. Try to find them. Probably wet one. But it's not the better, best for demonstration. Red one. 
and red one also. Let's try to check it. Yeah, we may see that the cells of capsule are proliferate. You may see it here. But it is uh, not the best for demonstration. The typical semi formation was shown a bit earlier in the previous slides. And the last uh, chapter of our uh, video is the tumors. So here we may see some kind of glands and uh, we may see a lot of glands here and here and also we may see huge component of connective tissue. And when we see huge overgrowing of connective tissue the, uh, with arsenosis of the glands, it must be the fibroadenoma of memory gland. The fibroadenoma of memory gland, and in that slide we may see the pericanalicular type, because the connective tissue grows nearby the uh, arsenosis of the memory gland. Connective tissue pronounced by the pinknesses, the glands looks like rings and uh, some arsenosis with different form inside of the connective tissue. Uh, it's not uh, difficult to see it because uh, it is a benign tumor and uh, uh, the structures of memory gland are not too transformed in result of that disease. Let's try to change the slide to another one. Here we may see the connective tissue again and uh, the osmosis of the uh, memory gland. And here we may see intracanalicular type because the osmosis are constricted by connective tissue. And uh, this is a difference between uh, the different types of uh, fibroadenoma of the memory gland. The fibroadenoma is a benign tumor which consists of connective tissue and glandular component. All these components we may see on that slide. And I hope it will be easy to detect it on the exam. One more. Uh, fibroadenoma with mixed probably type. It's intrapericanolicular type of fibroadenoma of memory gland because we may see both components of uh, fibroadenoma here. Some small arsenosis are constricted by the connective tissue. Some arsenosis are not. Some ducts. We also may see all components of the memory glands here and it's typical for fibroadenoma of memory gland. The questions will be about the tumor, uh, tumors, the fibroadenoma, what does it mean, how will you give the name to the tumor, and so on. The next slide, also about the tumor, we may see some atypical picture which we can't see in any organ. And uh, these formations looks like the glands, but they are not the glands. That's why we may suggest the adenocarcinoma. Adenocarcinoma is a malignant tumor out of uh, epithelium, uh, out of glandular epithelium. Also, we may see some non-transformated cells here, and only by this uh, area we may suggest that it is an adenocarcinoma of the stomach. If you can't see the normal cells in the slide, please 
cell adenocarcinoma and throughout localization. Sometimes the examinators will think that you made a mistake. Just a name of the tumor. It's adenocarcinoma. In, not in all slides you may see the healthy part of um, mucosal layer of the stomach. For example, here we may see only some atypical glands with atypical cells. The cellular atypism manifests itself by atypism of nuclease and atypism of cells. Uh, I mean, the forms of cell. Uh, look at these uh, cells and their nuclease. There is no any similar cells inside of that area. Well, the nucleus looks like different, we have different size, we have different forms. Sometimes we may see uh, some atypical mitosis here, and all these uh, components are the markers of the cellular atypism. Also, on that slide, I can't see the normal cells of the organ, that's why the correct diagnosis here will be adenocarcinoma. About uh, localization. Have you already seen it? And the third looks very similar. So I hope you feel the differences between, so not the differences, but you feel the special features of adenocarcinoma. It's a glandular-like composition, the cellular atypism, and probably it's all. The next tumor is a squamous cell keratinous carcinoma. You may note firstly the atypical cells of uh, squamous epithelium, flat epithelium, and uh, also you may see the cancer pearls. The cancer pearls is an accumulation of hyperkeratinization inside of a tumor. You may see it here. It looks like red one, red one, and the red one. Hmm. On that area, probably it looks better. Uh, cancer pills here and here. And the cells of the tumor looks like that one. The squamous cell keratinous carcinoma one is the easiest slide out of the tumor for detection because you may see these cancer pills which in 100% cases let you make a correct con con concision. Mm, there are a lot of cancer pills here. And please pay your attention to composition of the cells. The cells looks like hem homogenous, so they have a different form, the huge nuclease with hyperergic, uh, hyperchromic reaction. <clears throat> Probably it will be not difficult for you. And the last slide and last tumor from your exam is fibrosarcoma. For fibrosarcoma, it's typical picture like that. There is there are a lot of uh, features of cellular and tissue atypism here. So uh, when we discuss the connective tissue fibrils, uh, but the fibra, uh, fibra sarcoma is a tumor out of the connective tissue, and it looks like it should looks like the connective tissue. Uh, we may see some uh, fibrils of connective tissue. In normal tissue, uh, the, these fibrils uh, goes nearby 
uh, them and uh, never crossed. But in fibrosarcoma, we may see a lot of places of crossing of these fibrils, like that one. So that's why only these uh, polymorphism of the tumor let us make the conclusion about the fibrosarcoma. Also, we may look closer to the cells and uh, we may note that there are a lot of cells with different um, morphology. Some kind of um, atypical metosis, but they are too rare for you know, fibrosarcoma. So when all slides looks like that, you may suggest the fibrosarcoma. One more slide with it. Again, we may see connective tissue fibrils with hyperchromic reaction of nuclease. And we may see a lot of crossing of streams of these uh, connective tissue fibrils. This is a markers of cellular atypism of that tumor. Uh, this is really difficult slide for detection and uh, probably sometimes you may do the correct uh, diagnosis like an exception of all other slides. So that was the last slide out of the course and I hope now it will be a bit easier for you to make a uh, right uh, diagnosis on your exam. Uh, so good luck on exam. See you on exam. Bye.